Hi, in this video I'm going to show you some of the techniques of how you can use ChatGPT in order to get the most out of it. Usually in my videos I focus on quite complex workflows, but I decided to record this one to show some of the simpler ones that can be useful to anyone who has a ChatGPT account. So if you're interested, keep watching and I will demonstrate how they work. I will actually present three different approaches. One is based on so-called agentic workflow that you can actually implement inside ChatGPT as you talk to it. I'll show how. Then another approach is to create your own custom GPT, so you give a set of concrete instructions and then you can work with them. And the third one is to visualize the content of your ChatGPT conversation in order to find the gaps inside. So that's going to be the three approaches that I'm going to demonstrate today. Let's start with the first one that I call agentic workflow. So normally when most of the people talk to ChatGPT, they will ask it a question. So for example, what is the meaning of life in this case? Right, and then ChatGPT is going to provide quite a verbose answer where it will try to cover as much of the territory as possible. As you know, it always tries to be quite uh, general in its approach and to give you all the different perspectives. And that can be useful, but the problem is that uh, it kind of uses the logic that it has embedded into it by default. And this logic is to be as diverse as possible and also to support you in your thinking. Actually, if you ask uh, ChatGPT what instruction do you follow, you will be able to sometimes uh, see what kind of instructions it has. You see it has to be accurate and to provide correct information. It has to be safe. It has to respect privacy. It has to be clear and so on. So it already is somehow primed to behave in a certain way. And there are moments when you want to change that. And the best way to do that is to implement what people normally refer to as agentic workflow, but inside ChatGPT itself. What is agentic workflow? It's when you break your task into some subtasks and you assign an expert to each of those tasks. Normally people program it in Python, but you can actually do absolutely the same in ChatGPT. And to do that, you just make a new chat and you ask it to answer a certain question, but you first tell ChatGPT to tell you which logic it's going to use to answer that question. So if I want to ask what is the meaning of life, I will say answer, how you would approach answering this question. What is the meaning of life? By presenting me what you're going to take into account and why. Do not answer the question yet. So you first ask ChatGPT to actually present you the logic that it's going to use to answer a certain question. Then you can modify this logic and then, then you can give it the instruction to answer this question. So here, for example, it's telling me that it's going to try to take into account philosophical perspective, a scientific perspective, cultural, personal, and then it's going to use all these logics in order to give you the answer. And then if you ask it to then provide you an answer to your question, it's actually going to be much more detailed because it already explained a little bit uh, the logic it's going to follow. And in fact, I think that underneath it actually creates first a sort of like a, an outline of how it should answer the question and then it answers the question. So this is what happens in the background anyway, but now you have a little bit more control over it because you can say to, for example, focus on a specific aspect of that. So for instance, I can say focus on literature and historical context when answering this question. So I'm trying to ask it to take this one into account more and answer it right now, okay? And then, as you can see here, it says, uh, okay, through that perspective, you actually have a lot of different uh, ways of exploring it, where you take a perspective of Greek philosophy, of epic literature, religious texts, and so on. So as you can see, the answer becomes much more detailed and much more relevant to whatever is the topic of interest that you have at the moment. So that's why it's pretty interesting, and you can always disassemble any sort of interaction you have with ChatGPT in this way, give it a few instructions, and then only then bring it to give you an answer. So that can be quite useful. And in fact, uh, you will see that when you give it instructions this way, even if it's about coding, for instance, if you ask it to first explain you the logic that it's going to use and then use the logic, then the answers and the quality of answers and the relevance will be much more interesting for you. The second approach that I wanted to demonstrate that not so many people know, surprisingly, is that you can actually create your own custom GPT and share it with the world, which is amazing. So in order to do that, you need a paid uh, 
ChatGPT account, and then you click on Explore ChatGPT, and then you click Create. And here you can actually configure a new ChatGPT either through a chat, so you can engage into a chat with it and explain to it what you want it to do, or you can also configure it uh, by just giving it like an outline and a certain context. So for example, let's say I want to learn something about a certain topic, and a great way to do that is to upload the context. So here I have a short paper on complex dynamical systems written by Rick Dale who's an expert in the field. It was written for MIT um, Encyclopedia of Cognitive Science. And then I will call this one Complex Science GPT. So that's going to be the name of my GPT. I can also just call it Complex Science. And then I will describe what it does first. So I will say that it provides answers based on complex science approach. And in the instruction, I'm gonna tell it to, you are an expert on complex science. Use the context provided in the document in order to converse and respond to questions. You could also say that, for example, this is a French teacher and they should only answer in French to you. Or you could say that this is an expert on economics or finance and it answers from that perspective. You can even give it a role and you can say that, for example, it's not just any economics expert, but it's Ray Dalio, a famous investor, and, and GPT should use his principles in order to give you the responses. So you can really design it as specific or as general as you want and you can prime it with the context that you provide. So for example, you could upload a few uh, textbooks, a few writings of a specific person. You could also just give it an instruction here. If this person is famous enough, it's going to work quite well. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to give this and then I will click create and then you can share it with anyone on the store. So anyone can find it who searches for it and who has a link or anyone with the link, but it's not going to be in the store. Or you can also make it private and only use it yourself. So I usually like to start with anyone with the link so my friends can also try it. And then when I create this custom GPT, then I go inside this GPT uh, by clicking view GPT, and then I can start conversing with it. So I will ask it the same question, what is the meaning of life? And when I click here, you will see that it's talking about how it's a complex question, but the specific sort of uh, aspects of that they are now primed by the context that I gave it. So it was a paper on complex science, and as you can see, the answers are about interdependence and emergence, self-organization and adaptation, scale-free dynamics, nonlinear interactions, consciousness and collective intelligence. So as you can see, it's kind of like primed a little bit more in the direction that I find interesting. And so that's a great way to explore a certain topic. You just upload the books or the papers or the writings or even your own notes that relate to, the, to this topic, give it a few instructions, and then you can converse with it. And as you will start interacting with it, you will notice that sometimes, for example, the answers are too long. So you can go here into Edit GPT, and then you can also even use all caps to give a sort of like an emphasis to certain instructions that your answers are short and concise. So you can change a little bit the way that it works and then you update it, right? And then once you updated it, you can go back or you can try it from here, but I usually like actually going back uh, to the chat itself and then ask it again and see if my instruction now works better. So it gives shorter answers. And see, it's quite short. So there it already worked. And then you can give it a few more instructions and uh, then it's gonna work even better. So that's a really great way to write your own custom GPT. Uh, I have a friend who did that for learning about uh, a certain topic. He just uploaded all the different PDFs on that topic and starts to interact with it to, as, as a teacher, basically, and to test his knowledge. So that's a great use case. Another great use case is a friend who is making custom GPT for having interactions between couples. So he gave it some instructions of how it should try to take the perspective of the other person and how it shouldn't look for agreement, but it should kind of like uh, look for 
a new perspective for both of the parties and then he wants to use it with the voice mode actually as an app as a consultant when a couple has an argument in a conversation so that's also a great use case we have actually our own custom gpt that i will link to from this video where it is about learning a new language and the instructions that i've given to it was that it should always speak to you in the language that you start speaking in with it and that it should somehow gently correct you but not too much so you can engage into a conversation without constantly being subjected to correction so I actually use it myself to learn languages and I find it works really well and then we also have a like critical thinking one or I made a GPT that tries to explain things without using the words uh, for explanations for example if you ask it what is artificial intelligence uh, then it's going to talk about artificial intelligence without mentioning anything that relates to it. So you can also make some kind of funny ones like that as well. Okay, so that was the second approach where you create your own custom GPT. Try it out. It's a really powerful feature. And what's great is that you can also then share it with other people publicly, which is great. And the third approach is a more advanced one that uses Infernodus is when I'm, I have a conversation already and I would kind of like to develop it further. So. What normally happens is, let's say if I have a, like an interaction with ChatGPT where we talked for a long time about a certain subject, uh, at some point it gets quite long and then I need to see how uh, I can develop it further, right? So I can either read through the whole text and try to understand the meaning and then, you know, try to zoom in onto a certain subject or I can also use the plugin, it's an extension from Infranodus that you can install to your browser and then you can activate it with the button here that visualizes the content of your conversation as a knowledge graph highlighting the main ideas they will be bigger so for example here I see that this conversation is about complex systems and the meaning of life and then if you click on topics you also can see the main topics inside so for example this conversation about existential inquiry holistic perspective complex dynamics and so on so I can see what it's about which is a great overview you can also see in which context it's used so if it's about holistic perspective i can click on context and see the statement that relates to holistic perspective and most importantly i can also find the gaps inside so what are the topics that are not connected that could be better connected so for example i see one here on holistic perspective and another one on creative solutions and then if i click on uh, ai question it's going to generate a question based on this gap that it found in the content of this conversation that will help move this conversation further so for example here it says how do emergent properties from complex systems interactions within biological organisms and human societies influence creative problem solving and community building processes if i like this statement i can copy it from here and then ask it here and then ChatGPT is going to generate a response to it. So it's really great because I'm using this graph as a way to visualize the gaps in the conversation. Then I use the built-in AI, which works on GPT-4, which also underlies ChatGPT, to generate an interesting question. And then uh, I can pose this question back to the AI. So it's this kind of human in the loop approach where the AI is not doing the job for us, but it's making the job with us. And we're just using AI to kind of direct our thought to more interesting directions. So this is the third approach that you could use to get the most out of your ChatGPT interactions is to use an external tool like Infranodus to uh, get an overview of the content, detect the gaps inside, and then address those gaps with uh, your own questions or AI generated questions, and then feed them back into the system so that you can help it develop the conversation further in an interesting way. This one, you can try it on infranodus.com. So just to recap the three approaches, it's to ask ChatGPT to provide you the logic it's going to use to answer the questions and then to sort of make this logic more precise by giving um, each part of the logic a certain name, uh, like an agentic name that you can then use when you make ChatGPT answer a question. And the simplest way of doing it is just to ask it to describe the logic it's going to use to answer the question and only then to answer the question, the first approach. The second one is to actually create a custom GPT with a specific context or just with a specific instruction that you could then use to learn about a certain topic. And the third one is to visualize the content of any conversation, find the main ideas, find the gaps inside, uh, generate interesting questions using AI and feed them back into the system in order to help you develop 
this further. This is how it works. Let me know if you have any questions about this. And also if you would like to see more videos like this where I talk about different tools that exist out there, thinking tools, research tools, and where we also explore different workflows. And if you have a workflow that works for you that you would like to share with others, please also leave it in the comments of the video below. Thank you very much.